People power growth, but recruiting and onboarding are expensive, exhausting, and absolutely overwhelming. I've been there and it doesn't have to be this way. Welcome to Hire and Empower. I'm your host, Molly McGrath. Join me as we interview leaders who care about their teams and distill powerful lessons from them. This show is sponsored by H&E, helping organizations to find their best hire and empower them for success. Learn more at hiringandempowering.com. Okay, I'm really excited about today's guest. We have attorney Russell Farbernars here. We're going to have all the links to his website here. We're going to have his backstory and all the tips and techniques that Russell's going to share with us. Russell is an estate planning attorney by and large in Pennsylvania, working in uh, Berks County and the practice areas that he de- focuses on bankruptcy, corporate law, education law, estate planning, municipal law, and real estate law. Well, welcome, 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 Russell. Thank you for being our guest today. Oh, thank you, Molly, for having me here today. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your practice and what it is that you do to serve your community. So I, I can tell that you went and you, re- you read my website. Um, and we're, our website is actually in some transition. I'm getting having a new one designed right now that's really going to focus in on what what our core focus areas are, which is estate planning, elder law, probate, and real estate. Uh, so I I work with clients uh, that that are looking uh, to make a plan uh, for their for their legacy, and I work with clients. Uh, who are executing on a plan that that their that their loved ones may have left uh, in probate uh, in the state administration, and sometimes I'm working with clients whose 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 family members didn't leave a plan, uh, and we have to we have to you know use the uh, the intestacy process. Yeah. But uh, you, you'll notice that I, I use the word plan all the time because. I think planning is incredibly important, and and I think I try to encourage my clients to be intentional, to make to make make plans, make decisions, um, so that there's there's nothing left to do when they pass, but but for for those plans to be executed. Gotcha. Well, amazing areas of law. All of our listeners know for 26 years, I have been very, very passionate about estate planning, probate, trust admin, and Medicaid, uh, nursing home, Mm -hmm. VA attendance planning. So for all of our listeners out there that are always looking for somebody in Pennsylvania to refer your clients to. Russell, you have offices in Hamburg, PA, and then I'm going to butcher the name of your second well, office. Why I'm missing, Pennsylvania. Why I'm missing. Okay, great. Excellent. And we'll have the link to your website here on uh, on the website so or on the show notes so people can connect with you here. But tell us a little bit. You and I were t- chatting before we hit record today. We talked about you have a team of eight, a combo of virtual and uh, brick, old school brick and mortar, W-2. You have three people physically in the office, a W-2 remote in Iowa, contract attorney in South Carolina, contract paralegal in Alaska, an EA and executive assistant, a marketing coordinator in the Philippines full time who supports you with managing also your marketing agency that you are under contract with and working with. Did I get all that right? Most most of it. The the contract paralegal is, is in Nebraska. She's only one one hour behind me. Okay. Not not, not you know how Alaska's. I don't know however many hours okay. behind us on the East yeah. Coast, but. Uh, but other, otherwise, yeah, it, it, it's sort of been an interesting transition because uh, March of 2020, my staffing model looked a lot different than it than it looks today. I, I, it was, you know, it was all, you know, in person. I think I had I had four uh, in person employees at that at that point in time. Um, and we were busy and everyone was was sort of was overwhelmed, but I didn't really understand or appreciate the fact that remote work was a was an option it just never had dawned on me and then well we all know what happened in march of 2020 and the entire world has changed 
And now I've gone from having, you know, 100% full-time, full -time, you know, in-person employees to that actually being the minority of, of, my, of my staffing. I actually have more people who are remote um, than I do who are, who are physically in-person. And bravo to you for making the shift. Uh, many, it wasn't a traditional model in the legal space um, by and large. And then 2020 hits, you were forced to either crumble and dig your heels in that you're waiting for everything to go back to normal, which I have many people who are still digging their heels in and absolutely unwavering on the possibility of remote hybrid 1099 offshore uh what have you and you know and then others who actually had to close up shop because they were paralyzed so bravo to you for making that shift talk to us about you said to me you know i, I realize i'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one with my team and start treating my contractors as i do with w2 employees realizing the necessity which is just music to my ears to give your team mm -hmm. intentional, consistent time, attention, feedback. And then your next statement was, I, I started to go to schedule these one-on-ones with my contract employees as well as W2. And I'm like, holy moly, this is going to be a lot of time. Well, so I, I have, right now I have seven reportees. So that's, so I, I'm going to be doing seven one-on-one -on -one meetings um with them i'm doing them monthly i know that ideally it would be it, doing them and doing them weekly would be great but that would literally be an entire day of just of just doing the the one-on-one -on -one meetings which is not which which would be a, a very good use of time but would, would stretch me really thin in terms of in terms of time uh but i have always i've really always taken the position that my co my contractors um are, tr are treated uh, very similarly to my W-2s. I don't wanna say exactly the same because there is a difference between, you know, W-2s and 1099s in the, in the sense that the, the 1099s do, you, you, you don't, we don't impose a schedule on them or yeah. anything along, the, along those lines. Uh, but in terms of building a team and building a team culture, I have found it to be incredibly important to bring those 1099s into that culture and integrate them uh, into into the the the, the company or the, the firm that we're, that we're creating. So some things that I that I have that I have done. Number one, all of my um, 1099s have full access in my um, in my practice management system, so that they can access the information. Uh, and part of that became a convenience for me because I would, you know, I would then have, if I didn't do that, I would then have to email them everything that they would need. And then when there was something that they didn't need, that they would need that was an addition, I would have to go and find it. And it might take me a week to do that. And then, and then the mm -hmm. project would sort of be sitting. But more importantly to culture, it, I, I bring my, I've always invited my 1099s to participate in our monthly team meetings. We, we have a monthly team meeting on Zoom. Um, and, you know, we, we sort of, well, you know, do updates and thing, things that, you know, try to, you know, you know, see what, what we might need, need work on or whatnot um, uh, for the, for the business. And and then, as you mentioned, I just started doing uh, these one-on-ones uh, with everyone on the team, 1099s and w W-2s. And I actually did the first one yesterday with my contract paralegal, who uh, is is a contractor through Upwork, and she's been she's been with us. I think I hired her initially in 2020, uh, and I, I think it it was it's crucial to keeping her her engaged in everything that we're doing by ha by having that one-on-one -on -one time and you know and we talked about a lot of different things we talked about culture and how and how she she is a good culture fit uh and and i i think that 
I, I think I really think that it just helps with the engagement and with with keeping, you know, making sure that your 1099s aren't working off in a silo and disconnected from everything else that you're doing. And, and so you announce this to your team and you roll it out to say, you know, everybody is deserves a proper time, attention, feedback. Um, you've empowered them and showed them that you trust them by giving access to your CRM and things of that nature. Coming off of, you know, about 24 hours or so from doing your first one, how did you feel like... What walking in and walking out did you feel in regards to the buy-in and ownership of the 1099 person, how they felt afterwards, how, if you, how you felt, even though one hour is an extraordinary investment of time, especially for an attorney, what, what's your takeaway thus far in this process? I think she was invested before, but I think she's more invested, you know, now, now that we've, we've done, we've done it because the the one on one is not just a at least the way out we're doing it, it is is not just a okay let's go through all the cases you're working on and find out where you are you know the 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 purpose of the of the one on one is is to spend a little bit of time on you know what's the issue with this case or that case but it's really more geared towards professional development yes. you know solving problems some you know some informal coaching. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's the structure of it. It's, it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a check-in uh, on, you know, as, you know, so much as it is an opportunity to sort of work through issues and sort of try to make sure that the, that the team member is getting the resources that, that they need and helping them solve problems that I wouldn't otherwise be aware of. Yes. What's working? What's not working? Where do you need additional help and giving the opportunity to treat it like a old school coffee club? You're sitting down at the local coffee shop. You have a cup of coffee. The pressure's not high. The deadlines aren't looming and allows for you to people always, I always say, you have to remember it's a relationship first and foremost. Yes, you do exchange you know, services for money, what have you. But at the end of the day, if you pour into someone and give them your proper, your unintentional, undivided, your intentional, undivided time, attention, and feedback, they'll soar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely soar. Uh, Absolutely. And I, I I find that a lot of my employees, they will, they will go above and beyond. Uh, They will do things that I don't ask them to do. They'll, you know, they'll check their email on the weekend, even though I tell them they shouldn't do that. Um, but, you know, they, they, they want to, if they have a day off, they want to make sure that when they come in, that they're prepared and ready, ready to move forward. Yes. And, and, and that's part of the culture that we've created, but it's not, it's not a, I'm not telling them they need to do this. They're doing it because they have their own uh, strong work ethic. And investment. You're invested in them by giving your greatest investment you could give as an attorney and entrepreneur is your time because that is your tightest squeeze everywhere in your world. And it's pounded into your head about billable hours and you know efficiency and effectiveness as an attorney, double whammy as an entrepreneur. And bravo to you. Now, eventually, you can scale this when you hire an office manager. These small, tiny steps that you keep showing up and investing in your team help to grow your business. Or maybe you hire a professional law firm administrator, or maybe one of these employees decide to step up and lead and want to start doing running weekly team meetings where you're all coming together to leverage it and be able to check in, run it structured like a board of directors meeting, and then eventually take these on for you. But you're laying the from framework and already creating that proof of concept. I would love to see just for the heck of it to kind of gamify this for you to track from day one, which was yesterday, July 5th, 2022, to 90 days from now, just the measurement in all your areas, conversions, life cycle of a file, revenue, what have you, you will be very, very surprised at how everything just rises above. Uh, And that's, 
one of the one of the reasons to, to do it, you know, especially in this labor market, it's so much easier to work with the, the people you have, especially if they're good at what they're doing, than than tr- have to try to replace people. Mm. So, oh. so I, I I think that investing in in the the people I have because I do think that all the people I have are the right people. They're all their culture fits. They're they they should be where they are. I don't want them to be. You know, I, I want them to be engaged. I want them to be invested so that they, they want us to stay. And, 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 and pretty much all of them have been around um, my, for, 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 for years, really. Yes. Um, my, I do have an office ma- manager um, and she's, but she has been with, I think she's coming up on her 10th anniversary of working with the firm. She hasn't, okay. she's, she's, she started as a temp. Um, 10 years ago. I love that. And she just, we, we just kept, she kept, we, we ended up bringing her on initially part-time then full-time. And we, she just, you know, we get, kept giving her more and more responsibility. And, you know, she's, she told, she told me the only thing she didn't like about her job was that she couldn't, she couldn't work from home. Well, now she can. So now it's, it's pretty much like, you know, I'm sure there's something, some things that she doesn't like, but uh, really the big, the major things are, you know, giving, you know, by giving her that flexibility, I think that also has gotten her some additional investment. Absolutely. And what I love about the framework that you're setting up so often, I will hear from, um, from attorneys saying, nope, nope, nope. They have to be in the office. I tried hybrid. It didn't work. I tried remote. It didn't work. I tried hiring 1099 or virtual assistants. Didn't work. Tried to use an outsourced marketing agency. All the reasons why they, it didn't work and talking about their past versus so invested in their past story versus the future possibilities. And you know, like you have a marketing agency and I'm going to do a huge shout out and plug to Legalese and my buddy Jordan Ostroff there because you're working with them. And when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, you are very happy, but you have this marketing coordinator right now in the Philippines that's she's allowed and you've empowered her and supporting her and they're supporting her and training her to really be that coordination of everything for you. Right. So what would you say to people that are listening and they're rolling their eyes and saying, tried it, didn't work. Me too. I tried it and it didn't (laughs) work too. It didn't work the first time. It never does. Uh, You know, I, I, you know, I had hired, virtual assistants, you know, and it didn't work, but, but the reasons that it didn't work had nothing to do with the virtual assistant. It had everything to do with me and, mm. not, being, and not being ready and not having the structure and, you know, not knowing what I, what I wanted this virtual assistant to do. So mm. it's, it's it, it, in my, in my humble opinion, what, what you need to do is you, you need to create the role and know why you're bringing a virtual assistant on don't just bring on a virtual assistant to bring on a virtual assistant trust me i did that uh, <laughs> and, and then it just it, it really just was, well, why do i have this person and ultimately it's just the relationship just just fizzled out but when i when i brought on my executive assistant i had developed a job description so i knew I could tell her this, these are the things that you're responsible for, you know, so, you know, and then we updated that, you know, earlier this year, you know, when I started working with, uh, with Jordan's partner, uh, Greg Eisenberg, uh, and, you know, and, and, but I, I think that, again, it goes back to being intentional and you have, you have to have a plan. You can't just expect that things are just going to sort of work themselves out because virtual is the different skill set than in person because when someone's sitting in your office you can walk down to their desk drop something on on their desk and say you need to you need to work work on this with virtual you sort of you have to they have to you have to have a lot of communication uh and 
be able to to communicate what what tasks you want done um, and uh, and for me i've found that developing workflows has also made that a lot easier because we use smokeball for our practice management and so my executive assistant for instance has knows that when we have the new file she goes in and she sets it up and then she assigns workflows and then it will assign you know certain tasks that she needs to complete and then it'll assign other staff members other tasks that they, that they need to complete so that I'm not assigning manually assigning tasks on each file, it's automatically happening. Yeah, and and so I love what you say. Me too, been there, tried it, it didn't work. I realized that it's me. And using the example, so what makes it work, honestly, as you're talking, what makes it work for a W two or brick and, in the building brick and mortar employee, and also for a virtual offshore, what have you is the same because I know I coach a lot of firms and the, the assistant down the hall that you can walk and hand the file and say, you know, do this. They still have the same troubles because it's causing you as the attorney to get organized, to be clear and concise and well communicated to your point over communicating with your communication. Because a lot of times, we have, I believe, this false belief that we have an employee that's sitting down the hall that we can walk down the hall and hand them something. And then you go off to your client meeting or wherever else you need to go. And it's no different. They're still opening it and saying, I'm not crystal clear and absolutely certain and guaranteed on my next right move. So I'm not going to do anything until I can get the attorney's time. And the attorney's time is the attorney's time, whether it's hopping in a Zoom room or, or meeting in the conference room or answering an email, you're stretched thin. So what I love, what I'm hearing from you and my invitation to all the other attorneys saying that are listening is it really causes you to be more organized and intentional and clear and concise up front, whether you're dropping a file down the hall or you're giving it to a virtual assistant. What do you think? No, I, I, I agree. And, and like I was saying, we, we have our workflows and yes. we use we use the, the the task feature in in Smokeball because I will assign tasks to every to every everyone you know on on files. And part of it might help that I'm hybrid because I am going to the office only two days a week, and the rest of the time I work from home. So. I understand the need for the for the communication because I'm I'm in that that role, but you know everyone everyone uses the task function because it's an easy way to let someone know that there's something that they need to look at, um, and yes. you know my team members are empowered; they can set tasks for me. You know, you know, which, love that. You know, which which might seem a little, you know, to some to some people might seem. I'm not going to let him say, I'm not going to let my secretary tell me what to do. It's, that's not, that's not it. it, it what, what it is, is creating an efficient workflow. And, and then all the things that I need to do are located on my dashboard. And I, and when I have, you know, an hour free, I can start going through those and, and checking them off and getting them done. The other nice thing, you know, is that I can go and I can look at the ta at what tasks are assigned to other team members, so I can you know sort of manage workloads that way as well. Yeah, and it takes all the conversation out of it. Even if you don't have precise details, it's all deadline driven, to your point, workflow driven, and. You, I think, I hear from attorneys all the time, entrepreneurs all the time. I love when my team delegates tasks to me because at the end of the day, it's not your employee telling you what to do. We all yeah. work for the clients. They're actually right. having your back to make sure you don't miss deadlines. Uh, right. And, that, and that's exactly it. It's we, we're just trying to move everyone through our process and, and that way, you know, the work gets done, the client is happy, and we've given given the client the experience that they're looking for. Mm. So tell, you know, imparting words for the people sitting there saying, I have in the past did a combo or explored with a virtual hybrid. 
W-2 1099 model, the 1099 doesn't work X, Y, and Z. And I'm not talking about the classification in your taxes or your P&L or what have you, but just from a productivity and a profitability perspective. And for those that maybe have been fearful to do it, but they are sitting in this employee-driven market where they can't grow or scale or get relief or they're one minute away from losing. I, I talked to a firm yesterday. They said, we just lose we just lost two of our biggest, biggest clients because of a shortage of staff and they will not hire virtual or 1099 employees. What would be your advice about feel the fear, do it anyways, and, and setting up a framework such as you have for constant, consistent communication to, to really make it work? So in addition to the communication, what I have found also to be really helpful is we we have been developing our info base. So I have you know, training videos and you know whatnot that they all have access to. So that that is that is really key because it, it provides that self-help so that I don't have to train everyone, you know, on everything because I once I do the once I train it, do it once, I've done it for everyone going forward. Uh, but if you, one of the one of the things that I liked when I entered this 1099 virtual world was that you can dip your toe into that water. You know, you don't have to hire a full-time virtual assistant. You can hire someone for 10 hours a week mm. and, and then you can scale it up and or down as, as the work, as work is there or not there. And so that, that is, you know, I think that that, that, that is really, can be really helpful, especially if you, if you're fearful of getting of getting into into that area, yeah, I love it. Dip your toe in and give yeah. it a try. Ten hours a week, fifteen hours a week, whatever it might be. But again, I think what will really set you up for success is having the framework and the best practice for yourself. To your point, I love what you said earlier. Okay, I wrote up the job description. But then we're consistently revising it. We took a look at it. Get a starting point. I don't know a lot. This is a rule in marketing a lot of times when it comes to writing copy and content and creating videos, et cetera. Get the crappy version out first. Just get something down and then consistently review the job descriptions, the weekly goals, the monthly goals, right. the quarterly goal, and empower your employee to rewrite their job description and, and to support you within that. So there's really no excuse. What's a downside? If any, well, of digging your heels into, I want people in the office. I hear all the time. Well, I don't know what they're doing all day. Well, here's the other, here's the other thing that 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 people need to consider in this, particularly in this labor market. Yes. When you're looking for certain skills, you may not have that skill set available in your in your geographic location. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. This, this is, you know, this was us earlier this year. We needed to hire another estate paralegal. And ideally we wanted someone who could work 25 hours a week, which we, which we found. Uh, but we, we could not find the skill set in our, in our local area. Just because, not because there aren't people who, who do that work, but because they all had jobs and they weren't looking. And so we, by, by hiring a remote paralegal, I was able to get the skill set that I needed and, and quite honestly, get a fantastic employee who, who really does, does a great job. And, and that's the other thing is you can, you, you, when you are now doing a national or, or maybe even an international search, you open up the possibilities of finding that rock star uh, or yes. that unicorn that you're looking for. Yes, because again, you're hiring human beings. So if they have the skill set, they have everything that you need. They're going to be self-governing. They're going to be driven. They're going right. to care as much about, I always say, I feel like a lot of times 1099 and contract employees, they have that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. They have that, that they understand what it's me, it takes to run in a virtual world. So they are going to, the way they want to be able to plan their work and work their plan, they're going to get that back. It's a two-sided relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely.
All right. Tell our listeners how they can find you, especially if you have any estate planning, elder law, uh, probate trust him in uh, referrals, clients that are in Pennsylvania. You're not licensed to practice in that area. Russell, tell us how we can find you. Well, we are very active on social media. That's thanks to our friends at Legal Ease Marketing. Yes. Um, so you can find us on Facebook. Our handle is at AFA Law Firm on Instagram uh, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And then our website is antonavichfarbrs.com. Phone number is 610-562-2000. And you can always email me. Uh, and I try to make this easy. You can email me at info at afalawfirm.com. That comes right into my inbox. Uh, that way you don't have to remember how to spell my, my last name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll have everything laid out in the show notes for anyone who's driving, walking, jogging, what have you, go back to the show notes. And if, if anybody has any questions or fears or want to pick your brain in regards to what you've done to create such a successful model, um, would it be okay if they shot you an email or a DM to connect yeah. and pick your brain? It, it would, but I, I and I'm, but I'm also going to tell tell everyone that I didn't come to all of this magically on my own. I've been in the uh, lawyer lawyerist lab program for about oh, a year, two years now, maybe, and so I've so I've learned a lot through that. So certainly reach out to me, but uh, if you're considering a program, whether it be lawyerist or some other coaching program, that's that's always really helpful. Oh yes, yes, yes. I love our friends over there. Okay, great. Until next time, I uh, just want to thank you so much, Russell, for being a trailblazer, especially in the industry that is very, very committed to W2 and brick and mortar and for your time today. I'm, I can, might bring you back after you complete those <laughs> of one-on-ones and, sh and share with us at the end of your case study, how things are going and what's transformed for your firm. Sure, sure. I'm happy to be here and happy to come back. Oh, great. Okay, listeners, that's a wrap. Until next time, continue being leaders, leading leaders. We've reached the end of another impactful conversation on the Higher and Empower podcast. Whether this was your first episode or you're a longtime listener, I know you can tell I have passion for people. Whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, I understand the situation you're in. Hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and if that's not enough, it's also time-consuming. My friends, it doesn't have to be this way. There is a team at H&E that has your back. For over 25 years, they've transformed over 4,000 law firms into efficient, effective, profitable assets for their business and made it fun to come to work again. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our Employee Leadership Program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at HiringAndEmpowering.com.